Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making a mower blade sharpening jig just in time for you to start having to mow your lawn. Right off the bat, this looks like a relatively simple box with some fancy box joints on it, but it is a lot more than that. It's a caddy to carry everything you need to sharpen your mower blades. Cordless angle grinder, impact wrench, some extra flap and grinding discs, and even a spare set of mower blades if you have some. The big thing about this whole jig is the sharpening station right over here which has a compound angle into the side of it and a toggle clamp on top so you can put the blade in at a perfect 30 degree angle every single time, clamp it in place, have that hold your blade while well, you can sharpen it right over here and the only thing you need to focus on is keeping your angle grinder nice and flat. This is one of those great little projects that allows you to utilize a bunch of the scrap wood that you have laying around the shop and that is exactly what I did right here. I used a couple pieces of half inch and three quarter inch pier bond plywood to make this caddy slash sharpening jig. Right now I'm just visualizing what I want to have in this jig, taking some measurements and modifying the plans that I had made up in SketchUp. Onto the table saw to break down those three quarter and half inch pieces of plywood to the dimensions that I need. Quick stop over at the miter station to further break down those dimension sheets of plywood to the lengths that I need. To make these box joints, I'm going to be using my box joint jig that I made some time ago. Link to that up in the cards if you would care to watch that. And to do this, I'm going to be using a dado stack stacked up to one half of an inch to make half inch finger joints or box joints. It's been quite some time since I've had the opportunity to use this jig and I'm always stunned at how well this works. This is not my design, but you can find out more about that in the build video. I was able to stack and cut all four sides of the box at the same time. Once I got one side of the finger joints cut, I simply flipped the boards over, making sure I had the proper orientation, clamped them again, and cut all the finger joints on the other side. The base of the box is going to be captured with some stop dados and I will cut those with a half inch bit on the router table. I carefully cut all of the stop dados on all four portions of the side, making sure not to blow out the finger joint area that had less wood than the rest of the cut portion. Once this is done, I will sand the finger joints to make sure I get a clean glue joint and glue up the box. Hi there, we're up in the bathroom right now because I got something to tell you guys. This video has been brought to you by Dollar Shave Club because the only thing better than having sharp mower blades, which we're making the jig for, is having sharp and excellent razor blades for your bathroom routine. When I wake up in the morning, I look something like this. Maybe not so regularly handsome that early in the morning, but the first thing I do is I head into the bathroom, brush my teeth, hit the shower, shave, put a little gel in the hair for the engineering job. Yes, you can get those razor blades from Dollar Shave Club, but that's not the only thing. You can get everything. You can get shaving cream, you can get body wash, toothpaste, and all sorts of different styling products so you can look, feel, and smell your best 
not just have the best razor. Check it out. This is the Dollar Shave Club starter kit that they're basically giving away for $5 right now to new members. In this box, you get the heavy duty razor handle, which you can probably knock somebody out with this thing. Bunch of one white Charlie shave butter. You get some body cleanse and you get the ever popular cartridge of high quality razors. Be sure to check out dollarshaveclub.com slash DIY Tyler so you can get your first box with the executive razor, a full kit full of razor blade cartridges, and after that, the razor blades are only a couple dollars a month. Remember, dollarshaveclub.com slash DIY Tyler. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club. Be sure to go click on that link because supporting them helps support this channel. Now that we got the box assembled and allow that time to dry, I'm going to be cutting the handle portion. And I laid that out using a square and this caster set from my old Clearview Cyclone so that I could lay out the lines to cut on the bandsaw and clean up on the oscillating spindle sander. The easiest way I have found to make a simple handle is to use a Forstner bit to make your circular cuts on either side of the handle and then clean it up and remove that portion with a jigsaw. I used my cordless trim router with an eighth inch roundover bit to put a slight roundover on all visible portions of the handle board. Up to this point, I've assembled this box with no hardware, so I decided why not keep that going. I'm going to use some dowels to fasten the handle portion in place. So I clamped the handle portion using some stop blocks to make sure it didn't move and drilled a half inch hole, three on each side, to put some half inch dowels in there to prevent the handle portion from ever breaking free from the box. While those dowels were drying, I applied a liberal amount of glue to this pre-stacked section of 3 quarter inch plywood and glued this into one corner of the sharpening box. This is to give me something solid to cut my compound angle into and to fasten the toggle clamp. Once everything was dried up with the dowels, I used a flush cut saw to trim them off and we'll hit them with a little sandpaper later. Using my digital bevel gauge, I found out roughly the angle of the mower blades, which happened to be 30 degrees, and set my table saw blade to that. Then I used my spline cutting jig, coupled with that holding the box at a 45 degree angle, and the 30 degree angle of the blade, I was able to get my compound spline to hold the blade in the proper position for sharpening. I cleaned up the base of that cut with a sharp chisel and set a blade in place to see how it looked. It was fantastic. Super pleased with how this was turning out. A cheap toggle clamp will allow me to clamp the blade into place easily and quickly. I fastened the toggle clamp into place using two and a half inch square head pocket hole screws. I initially was a little bit disappointed with the clamping pressure, but a quick adjustment to the clamp straightened that right up and it is solid as a rock. A quick pass with a 180 grit sandpaper to make sure everything is nice and smooth and no splinters and a couple goats of Minwax Polycrylic, which I detest, but I needed to get rid of it and this was a good project to utilize it on. And for a real field test, to be honest with you, I actually thought this thing would slide around a little bit when you were applying pressure and sharpening one side of the blade, but I was shocked at how steady this box was. It must be the amount of friction from the bottom of the box on the ground. It doesn't slide around in the least bit. I have actually been trying to come up with a clever design for over a year, and this finally hit me one day, and it's always funny how it's such a simple, beautiful solution that sometimes works so well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hammer that thumbs up button. Helps us out a ton. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.